Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure to me to be part of this master class with such a group of international experts. And for that, I would like to thank Promosa, the Alliance of Biodiversity International, and the CGR program, Roots, Tubers, and Bananas. Also, to Dr. Miguel Dita for to invite me and Corbana to be part of this initiative and for their help in the preparation of this conference. The title of my presentation is how to recognize the silent wilt of banana in the field and distinguish it from diseases with similar symptoms. As you know, the silent wilt of bananas is a typical vascular disease and the symptoms internal and external are closely related to the process of infection by the pathogen within the plant. So in this talk, we intend to review a group of symptoms, both external and internal, that may help us to recognize the disease in the field. We will also review quickly some biotic and abiotic factors that may generate some confusion in the field and how to discriminate it from fusarium oil of bananas. The first symptoms of fusarium oil uh, are vascular discoloration that occur in feeder roots, which are the initial sites of infection of the pathogen. But of course, we cannot see it in the field. As already explained it by Wayne, the disease has a quite long incubation period. These symptoms progress to the horizon and are more evident where the steel joins the cortex in this area. In resistant cultivars, infection is generally stopped at the root and rhizome levels, but in susceptible cultivars, the infections continue to progress until it infects almost the entire rhizome of the mother plant and later of the suckers. When the pathogen reach and infect the rhizome is usually when the first external symptoms begin to appear in the pseudostem, in the lips, or both. After embodying the rhizome, the infection process continues and the pathogen eventually colonizes the pseudostem. Pronounced vascular discoloration is usually evident in the pseudostem and by this time, External symptoms should be evident and clearly visible in the plant. Vascular discoloration also appears in other, in other parts of the plant, like the petioles and their central veins, veins or lips, initiating by the oldest ones. In terms of external symptoms, Fusarium wheel of bananas can be divided into two types of pathologies. The first one is the typical with yellowing, wilting, and sudden death and the second, alterations in growth with progressive death. In this slide, we can see more details about these two pathologies. Like I mentioned before, the first one, the first one is the gel, is the typical, it characterized by the yellowing of the older leaves with the subsequent collapse of these leaves at the junction of the petiole with the pseudo stem, wilting and sudden dent of the plant in, in a relatively short time two to three weeks. Of course, this time uh, depends on environmental factors, cultivar susceptibility, uh, management, etc. They may or may not be splitting of the base of the cell stain with this pathology. In the second pathology, the plants show alterations in growth, such as bulges, splitting of the base of the cell stain, malformation of uh, the youngest leaves, and collapse of the leaves, of the, of the oldest leaves while they're still green. Sometimes in this pathology, the plant can recover and appear to be healthy, then develop symptoms again dying uh, within two or four months. This slide is basically to show you that we can see the same symptoms in the greenhouse and in the field. Also, the two pathologies described it above in the field, also can be observed in the greenhouse. In diseased plants, if bunches bunch, if bunch emerged, it is usually stunted and small. Generally, there is no evidence of, extern of, of internal symptoms in the bunch, in the peduncle, in the crown, and in the fruit. But recently, Bay and collaborators demonstrated the presence of symptoms of Fusarium well tropical rainfall in the peduncle of uh, bananas. 
Also, they isolate the pathogen and confirm it is pathogenicity. Although it's not reported yet, same symptoms have been also observed in Costa Rica, in Broadway Trail by me, and also in Brazil, in Prata, by the doctors Miguel Dita and uh, Fernando Adat. As Bay uh, and collaborators indicate, indicate, this represents an additional risk and demand and a strategy for his management. This is very interesting because the male boot of the bananas also can show some symptoms as a consequence of the disease. This may, this may appear as a stunted, shorter, smaller, and uh, than those of the healthy plants. So uh, you can see this, the difference in this comparative picture. There are no major difference in symptoms between cultivars, races, BCGs, pathogens, and locations. In plants with fusarium well, the growth of the sucker is abnormally stimulated in growth. Over time, this has been a problem because farmers use them as a planting material, and consequently, they are contributing to the spreading of the pathogen. This slide is just to summarize the symptoms of the sarin wheel, showing how the disease progresses, and to highlight that we can find in the, uh, in the field the disease at the different stage of development. Similar to the previous slide, but now comparing a healthy plant at the left side of your screen with the infected plant in the right side, again, very important to pay attention to the internal continuous discoloration of the pseudostain strands. It is also important to mention external symptoms need to be confirmed by checking internal ones. Also, that is a, a soil board pathogen that starts the infection process by secondary roots. Sometimes for internal symptoms, we need to go down in the rhizome to properly observe internal symptoms or in vascular discoloration and confirm uh, the diagnostic in the field. Uh, this, this also to uh, summarize the external and internal symptoms of fusarium well of bananas and compare uh, the healthy plants with a different stage of uh, the disease severity from uh, less severity to high severity in, in the case of the external symptoms and internal symptoms. Now uh, we can go to, to review some diseases that can be confusing with fusarium well and how to distinguish them. Uh, it. Muco is possibly uh, the disease that could eventually bring more challenges in terms of discriminated, discriminating it from a fusarium world of bananas. External symptoms of Moco can be confused with those of fusarium world of bananas or mature plants, but the trained people can detect some well defined differences on leaves inside their cell stem, suckers, and fruits. In contrast to fusarium wilt in young plants affected by moco, the symptoms begin in the youngest leaves. One or two of the two youngest leaves turn pale, ground, turn pale green or yellow and collapse near to the junction of the lamina with the petiole. With moco, vascular uh, discoloration is concentrated near to the center of the cell stem becoming less uh, apparent peripherally. This, this, this is opposite to uh, fusarium wilt. In fusarium wilt of bananas, these colored vascular strands in the cell stem appear larger in diameter and are usually concentrated more peripherally. This uh, photo demonstrates clearly the difference in the uh, infection process of the pathogen inside the cell stem. Like uh, the mother plant, young suckers affected by moco can show wilting, yellowing, necrosis, and collapse of the youngest leaves near to the junction of the lamina with the petiole. Uh, with moco, it's very normal to see suckers affected in a short time, same time of the mother plant or few days or weeks after, after the uh, apparition of symptoms in the mother plant. This is no normal with the certain way. 
It's not normal with moco to see central substance splitting uh, of the plants, but uh, some strain, some strains can cause blackening, twisting, and splitting of the leaf, leaf sheets in suckers. These type of symptoms are not seen with the soil world of bananas. This is other important difference between moco and fusarium wheel. Uh, in moco, fluid symptoms are never found with fusarium wheel are very characteristic, very characteristic. Some fingers tend to yellow prematurely with cracking and splitting of the peel. Internally, a firm uh, brown to gray dry root is found in the fluid. Uh, without what smell. An abundant vascular dysporation in the peduncle is uh, frequent with moco, premature and premature ripening in the dry rot of the food. Plantains, normally highly resistant to fusarium wheel, are very susceptible to moco, uh, and the symptoms are the same as in bananas. Uh, you can see here the collapse of the youngest leaves and also the abundant, abundant vascular discoloration in the peduncle of the bunch, uh, the premature ripening of fruits, and the typical uh, dry rot of the food. Bacterial soft rot uh, of rhizome and uh, pseudo stem, also called albumia, uh, is other disease that can be confused with fusarium wheel. Externally, symptoms sometimes resemble those of certain wild bananas. There is a yellowing and wilting of the leaves. All the leaves fall while they're still green, and the young center leaves turn yellow. The root, bacterial soil root, is a, a characterized by a massive, soft, odorous root of the center of the rhizome. The root progress to the septal stem destroying the rowing point and causing internal decay and vascular discoloration that you can see here in these uh, pictures. This other disease, this other disease the pseudostain wear rot, is more uh, frequent in plantains because, because plantains are more susceptible to the disease than bananas. Uh, the bacteria enter in the left sheets, atroch, wounds, left when the left petals are, petals are cut. Uh, a slow yellowing uh, and wilting of the older leaves can be observed, but sometimes this is not occur. The soft rot advances down the cell stem, like you see here in this uh, picture, to the interior of the leaf sheets, but, the, but does not penetrate the rhizome. The more severe attack, attacks of this if disease occur, Occurs on plants near to flowering, but even June plants can be attacked. In severe cases, mainly in plants with bunch, the cell stem collapses by, by the root that the doubles over. There are no symptoms on fruit. BSB also can uh, show some symptoms similar to Fusarium wheel of bananas. This includes splitting of the base of the pseudo stent and abnormal growth of the suckers. But the BSP has some very characteristic symptoms, such as streaks on the leaves and necrotic lesions in the external part of the pseudo stent and in the fruit that are not typical with fusarium wheel. And it uh, permits to differentiate these two diseases. In terms of no infectious diseases and or physiological disorders caused by abiotic factors, it's a very important uh, because they can cause complex symptoms in plants, also because they can predispose the plants to the infection by, the, by pathogens. This topic is complex and broad, therefore it requires a more detailed analysis in a specific conference. For this reason, here we will limit ourselves only to mentioning them However, it is worth to mention that with all the intense rain and flooding we are experiencing in Latin America and the Caribbean, but also in many other production regions due to hurricanes and cyclones, 
plants exposed to several days of flooding may develop symptoms similar to Fusarium wilt. We should pay attention to the pathogen dispersal. As already mentioned, water is a very efficient disseminating it, but also be alert to potential plants with symptoms similar to Fusarium wilt. Between the uh, this physiological disorder for abiotic factors that can cause similar symptoms of certain will include mineral deficiencies and toxicities with macro and micronutrients, are adverse and extreme weather, flooding, water deficit and drought, and chemical injuries like herbicides. Just an example that may also be curious is the impact of the thunderbolts. Thunderbolts uh, can in those uh, uh, spots of wilting plants inside the plantation that can be confused with uh, fusarium wilt. Also, the uh, electric shock uh, can produce symptoms similar to fusarium wilt. Look here, it's a fusarium wilt uh, plant infected by fusarium wilt, and in the both sides, but plants which are electricity shocks. Droge is also, also induced yellowing and wilting in plants. And as we know, drought predispose the plant to the infection by fusarium wilt. Lyphosate, a common herbicide used in bananas, uh, can produce symptoms very similar to the one of the pathologies of fusarium wilt. Like you can see in these pictures, the malformation of these young leaves in plants with toxicity of fusarium of, of uh, glyphosate, very similar to the uh, malformation and distortion of the young, uh, younger leaves in plants affected by fusarium wilt. Some tools like uh, photographic uh, uh, field guidelines help a lot in the identification of symptoms. We have developed a uh, very practical and simple symptom field guide resistant to the uh, weather conditions. The idea is that the growers inform us promptly if they see a suspicious plant. Training of people from MPPOs uh, is very important. The personnel must have the correct skill, skills for symptoms recognition and collection of samples with biosecurity procedures for laboratory analysis. Going to the conclusions, uh, a correct recognition of fusarium willow banana symptoms is key for early detection and disease management. Identification of fusarium willow requires in-depth training in symptoms recognition, not only for the disease himself, but also for those with similarities, special attention on potential diseases complexes, for example, bacterial soft rot, blood fusarium willow, or local blood fusarium willow is needed. Training personnel on the identification of fusarium willow bananas for collection of samples in the field should also include biosecurity procedures and clear guidelines to distinguish fusarium willow bananas from other diseases and his complexes. For FOC tier 4, molecular analysis are mandatory. Samples must be collected by MPPO's personnel with the strict biosecurity biosecurity procedures. Well, before finishing, I want to say thanks again to PROMUSA, the Alliance of Biodiversity and the CGR program, also to Dr. Miguel Dita, and to, of course, to all of you for your attention. This is a good example of how we can work together, combining our diverse skills and experience to protect our valuable industry against this serious disease. Thank you very much and have a good day.